Yeah. Anyway. And yeah. how? Yeah. You want me to tell who the wife, midwife yeah. was? Oh, yeah. Sure, you can do all that. Camera's rolling. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> oh. My name is Aline Beaulieu Jandro. Is that how I'm supposed? Can you spell it? Can you spell Aline Jandro? Aline Jandro. A L I N E. Jandro. J A N D R E A U. Beaulieu. B E A U L I E U. I was born in Soldier Pond, Maine, or on the birth certificate it says Wallagrass, Maine, on June 17, 1929, uh, at, in my mother's bedroom, a uh, Mrs. Pitt Jock was the midwife, I was told. Okay, I'm going to stop there for now. There's something I see. The camera is speeding and... How I was born? Yeah, you said you were born just off the scratch, start from the beginning. Start from scratch? Yeah. Like what my name is in yeah. the whole nine yards? Yeah. My name is Aline Beaulieu Jandro, and I was born in Soldier Pond, Maine. At that time, I believe it's registered as Wallagrass, Maine, uh, in my parents' bedroom. And in attendance was a Mrs. Peter Jacques. She was a midwife. And it, it was on June 17, 1929. I don't know the time or the day. It was never told. And my mother's name is Annabelle Labbé Beaulieu. And my father is Adrien Joseph Beaulieu. And what is your relationship with the Nick family? My mother, Annabelle, is a sister to Cécile Labbé. McNabb. They were just the two sisters. They also had a brother, uh, Ulysse, who um, we have no idea what happened to him. There was just no, there's no record of that I'm aware of where he's at, where he was, or he was born in 1900. Oh, with my cousin. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I remember. Oh, I remember so many things. I remember loving to go there because there was full of kids, and was always playing somewhere, in the barn or in the yard somewhere, and especially in the schoolyard, there was always something happening in there. And I remember going there on the train because my father worked for the railroad as well as Monoc. So we had free access to the rail to the train. So they put me on the train at night. I think that that train probably went by about four o'clock, and I'd end up in Eagle Lake, and I'd spend the night there. And the next morning, they'd ship me back home. So, so what did your father do on the? Uh... He was a station agent at that time. When I was born. And my mother, my mother was postmaster. She became postmaster in 1927. That was the year my brother was born. My brother was born in January, and she took post, the post office there in November, 1927. Okay, now who were your, your, the cousins that you hung up the most? Oh, well, it was Muddy Paul and Jackie. I remember mostly, it was mostly Muddy Paul, I think, because when she would come home, I remember we go to bed at night, and we had to tell each other stories. It was made-up things we'd tell, and eventually we'd fall asleep on these stories we would be telling each other. I remember that vividly, being in bed together and telling stories, wild stories about I don't know what. Well, in Soldier Pond, I, I don't remember much. I remember going into that school. The school, it was a big building. It had two floors. <coughs> and I remember Miss Jacques was one of the teachers there. And, uh, oh, I remember she had a boyfriend. Uh, what was his, I forgot his name, Bouchard, Jerry Bouchard. And when we played uh, Madame, Madame and Madame, you know, they played 
house or whatever, uh, there was always someone that was going to be Ladette Jacques and the, uh, Miss Jacques or the other one was going to be Jerry because he was a handsome thing and he hung around the school quite a bit, I think. And I don't know if I don't think I did more than one year there. Then I went to convent at Sanagat for the first grade. Now you didn't become a nun. So where did you think um, Mary Paul becoming a nun? Oh, well, that was okay. I mean, that she was nun material. What? She was, I mean, what I knew of her, not uh, growing up as kids, no. Never in that, I never experienced that, or I never saw that in her. But when we went to Sabatis, I could see it in her. She, that was her last year. Uh, as she was a senior the year I went in as a junior. And she definitely was, well, she was a nice girl. I'd like to hear about the experiences with the nuns in Tatagat as opposed to when you went to Lewis. Do you hear interesting stories from young Dot and Jackie about what that was like? Not very pleasant experience. But no. Tell us about that. Well, the ones in Sanagat, you know, listen, I was young. And I remember, that's one thing I remember, my father was the one that took me to school. My mother never came with us. Um, because of that. Anyway, the first time I went there, I had a carriage and a doll. I remember that, you know, when I went in there. And I don't know if I was able to keep that with me or if that was just something to bribe me to get there. And uh, I was always afraid of the nuns. I was always, I remember my mother saying when they come to visit us on weekends, they could, they could visit us on Sundays, that my hands were always sweaty. I don't know if that was nerves or what, but it could have been. Um, I mean, they, they were, there was a regimen. I mean, you got up in the morning, you uh, washed, I don't know how good that was, uh, and then you went to church, and I don't know what we did between church and breakfast, and then another thing, between, oh, everybody had to help clean the, the place up. We all had little chores. Somebody dusted this, and somebody did the other things. Um, that went on from, from the time I went there until I was in the eighth grade. Um, what made you stress out about seeing this, going to school with the nuns? What, what, what made you afraid of them? Oh, they were so, they were so strict. I mean, they were so, you couldn't, I mean, it, it was regimented, as I said, I, I told some of you people before. Like, if you had to go to the bathroom, you went when it was time to go, or in between, you did, I mean, you just had to hold it until, until it was time to go. There was no in-between thing. I know. Okay, we're going to stop taking. Oh, I moved in Lewiston? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I like that in comparison. Am I back on? You're back on. Okay. Well, um, and in Sanagat, uh, what I experienced more was that the nuns had their favorites. And that was usually the people, the children whose parents had money. And especially in town in Sanagat, there was a couple of girls that, of my age, that parents had stores. And the mother would come into the parlor smelling like, oh, you know what? And those people, the nuns, would just do anything for them. But the other people, like myself, and a lot of others, a lot of orphans that never had parents come in, um, you know, you weren't treated the same as everybody else. I, I never liked that. I always thought that was, but I survived that. The only, the only way you survive that is just by accepting it. And I don't feel bad that my parents sent me there. I think it was an effort on my mother's part, especially on her part, to send me there. And there was a reason for that, why we went there. We weren't sent there because we were bad at home. We were sent there because there was things happening at home that she didn't want us aware of. And what was that? That was my father's um, alcoholic problem. It was very serious, and I found out since, you know, this, my mother never talked about this. This never got that from her. I've got that through letters that I wrote to her from the convent, or uh, none, none of her letters, but also from Imelda, 
Mitaye, and from a friend that stayed with my mother one year when my father was away to do whatever it is he was doing when he was on these cures. But that happened several times. And I believe that's why we were sent away to school. Really. Uh, could you tell me now, you said your mom was orphaned, which also meant that mm -hmm. my grandmother was orphaned as well. And that's right. Could you tell me the story about how that came to be? Well, their father died in the woods in Michigan when he was 36. And she, uh, the mother, uh, Mamer Josephine, died when she was 42 of tuberculosis. Now, the kids, after... Oh, what did he die of in Michigan? An accident. Oh, I'm sorry. An accident in the woods. And okay, what was the accident? I don't know. I was never told. I know it was in the woods. What, what was told to me was that he was killed uh, by a branch that fell from a tree that was cut down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, possibly. Now, after he died, according to the letters I have here, she went back to school or something, because the kids, the three kids were at that convent in Wallagrass, because there are letters and cards that she would send to the kids, that she missed them. And I don't know why they stayed there, but apparently she was, she was teaching outside of the home. She was away somewhere. And, but when she died, she was at home in that house off Route 11, across from where Silvio Fournier lived. The house is still there today. I, I met the gentleman that lives in there one time. Uh, his name I've forgotten, but he told me I could go in there if I wanted to, to visit him. Never did. Why did you send the gas and then you get up and lose it? Oh, my God. What that is Oh, okay. Well, that summer when I, after eighth grade, I didn't want to go back there. You know, I was just, I got a little older and I was uh, gotten strong enough to express my feelings about the convent to my parents. Before that, you never said, I don't want to go there. So that summer, my mother was in the hospital. She had had hysterectomy and was quite sick. She, w I don't know how long she stayed in the hospital. But Bert and Imelda Mitaye would come every summer to visit us from Connecticut. And they were there that summer. And somehow or other, I ended up with them for two years as a freshman and a sophomore in Bristol, Connecticut. And then I stayed there with them for those two full years. And apparently the next summer I came back to Soldier Pond with them. And then that's when Matan Cecil or somebody had, had found this convent in Sabatis. And uh, well, the two girls were going, Mighty Paul and Jackie were going there. Well, so there I go, here I'm going. And I, I don't remember much about the uh, uniforms we wore there. I have pictures somewhere. However, I remember the ride on the train from Soldier Pond in Eagle Lake or wherever we ended up in Lewiston at night, took a bus to the road, and then we had to walk up, up this, the street up to the school. And of course, the nuns kiss you. Those nuns kiss you on both cheeks which was okay. But they were, in comparison to the other nuns, they were nice, most of them. I mean, they were strict too. I mean, everything was regimented there as well. But I think because I was older, it was easier for me to accept what they were forcing me or making me do for them. And it, it, we had, the food was, I thought the food was excellent. And we had more food than you could eat. And they served it like in the, as they do in France, by um, the, I can't say it now, the salad and the entree. And then, um, you know, it was never all served at once. The veggies and everything, it was separated. But, and then on weekends, the only three people left there was Mighty Paul, Jackie, and I. The rest of them all went home on weekends. And that, and that was kind of fun because then the, the younger nuns would play hide and seek with us in the barn. Now, I don't know if your sisters have said that, but I, I remember that. I remember playing in the barn with, there was one young nun, she had a tooth missing in the front here. 
but she was she was fun. I think she was my um, shorthand teacher. I can't remember her name, but anyway. Um, and then, if we had permission from my parents, we could go downtown. We could go to Lewiston on Saturday, and we always had some money because our parents always made sure we had the nuns had some money for us to spend. And I remember we used to go to Sam's Sandwich Shop and buy um, a sub, a subway. Well, it's Subway today, but a sandwich, a big sandwich for a dollar. And we'd bring that back and hide that under our beds. That smells so good compared to them. But I I, um, I don't have any misgivings about the nuns there. I know I had a hard time with my French because I wasn't, uh, and I think I had a hard time. That's another thing, too, that nobody ever found out about me is that I I think I'm dyslexic. Dyslexic? I can't even say the word, see? Reading. That was another thing, the nuns. If you didn't read fluently and beautifully, I mean, you probably read two sentences and then, okay, the next gal, and she probably read the whole chapter. I was never able to read comfortably in front of a class. I always had a hard time there. Can you describe um, what it was like to go to the Midmore family in Eagle Lake? Um, some of us recall your father being a storyteller. Mm. Yes, he played the violin and he played the saxophone. And he he's one of those that would do recitations. I mean, he was had a good brain, nice brain, uh, memory. And he would recite all these poems or what have you. And uh, sing, he had a beautiful voice. I remember he used to sing um, A Holy Night at Midnight, at Midnight Mass. I mean, that was always special to me. Um, and he played the violin. Um, you know, he was a very smart man, and it's it's sad that he uh, had to let that uh, go by the by the wayside. Now, what did he do for the? He was station agent okay, for the so railroad. Was, okay. For the railroad. Sure that. Yeah, and my mother was postmaster for 40 years. I mean, she took that in 1927, and. I think she retired in 68. Now, she was known to us as the Mitten Aunt. Now, she also, and there's a reason why I'm The what? The Mitten Aunt. Oh, oh the Mitten Aunt. Oh, she used to make mittens? Yeah. Oh, well, yes. And your mother did, too. I mean, your mother, your grandmother. Uh, Matanza Sid, I remember going there. Matanza Sid would be talking. Well, they always talked about a minute. And she would be making, uh, you know, like when you make a, sto a, so a stocking and when you round out the heel, she could do that talking a mile a minute without even batting an eyelash and not even looking at it. I was always amazed at that, how they did that. But I, I don't remember my mother doing stockings, but I remember her doing mittens, yes. There are a number of stories at my house about your mother who won a great talker she was and a card player and oh. a jokester and something I played with my father and they yes. had those shady deals. Those yes, they did. Well. And you know your mother did too. Can we hear? Can I hear about this? Well, your well, my mother was my mother's Shalomang, and you know they would knock on the ta on the table, and that meant they had a card for them to come back to. And Matanza said, of course, was always very quiet and very holy. You know, like she wouldn't cheat. I played with her once, and I know she did, because my mother had cheated the game before, and that second, I, um, and I know it wasn't intentional, because she was winking at me, and that was so funny because my mother never caught on. She was too busy doing her thing. Well, yes, and she used to love to play with your Uncle Frank. Was it Frank? Yeah, because he was just like her. And so was Harold's dad. I mean, when he came up and if she was around, they would play together and, and cheat. I mean, cheat like fun cheat. You know, they, were, they weren't doing it for money. What was this about Shady Wheels? Well, the cheating. Oh, the cheating. I, I, okay. I didn't I didn't want to use the word at that time. <laughs> well, they, they were kind of, they were, they were having fun. I'm a, my mother was a type that uh, liked to have fun and to laugh. And I th I think she, she had, she, needed to. Uh, she did. Yeah. And I think uh, when she got to be alone, she did a lot of that. I mean, you know, she uh, 
she could relax. She was more relaxed. Did your family ever go on picnics at the lake with the, with the McNair family? Oh, yes. We would call a lot of picnics in our family. Yeah. yeah. That big canoe. And that big boat. I remember once being caught on the lake in that big boat. Oh, well, I was sitting right in the bottom somewhere. It was, it must have been an army of us in that boat. Probably only took four people. There was probably 24. And there was a motor on that, I think. And I remember it was a storm coming or it was very rough. And that's all I remember. But I do remember we used to go on the side of the lake on picnics. And I used to love to go there. Cause it, and then upstairs, you know, that, there was that big upstairs room where the boys used to sleep? We used to play there, do something there. Because we were never allowed in the living room with the old people. Because, you know, they had to talk about nice other things. And I remember we used to play in the kitchen. And your mother, um, my tante, always had uh, umpteen uh, loaves of bread on the sink that had just been brought out uh, on the counter, that had just been brought out of the oven. Can you imagine? I don't know what we did if we ate them. Or, do you remember? Did we eat them? We must have eaten it. I'd like to know uh, here about stories uh, you and your brother, because Dan now was also called to some members of our family. And if you had any special relationships with other members of the family in later years? In later years? Well, you know, we, we all sort of grew apart. I mean, after I got married, I moved away. And you know you're busy bringing up a family and visiting my I was visiting my mother on weekends because she was alone then um, I remember Armando coming to our house once with um, his wife I remember they were sitting on the couch and they didn't have any children with them but I remember him visiting with us and telling us about his experience at this, that college they went to it wasn't a college when they went to high school and in Bitterford uh, that Ben La was boss <laughs> and and he of course he was younger I think than Ben La must have been and Ben La was boss and he wasn't all too happy you what, do you mean, what, what do you mean Ben La was boss what did he do well he was boss of the three of them well you know I, th I, I think I vaguely remember him saying something about you know our parents always made sure we had some money in there, some little, little pity cash if you needed it to buy candy or whatever it is. So Ben made himself like in charge, more or less. I mean, I mean that's what he expressed. And I, I don't think he was, uh, uh, you know, mad about that whole situation, but I remember once he was telling us that. Ben, uh, Alma was very quiet type, never spoke much. Now you had uh, you were telling me earlier that you were close to Mary Paul as well as Jackie. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, so what were some of your experiences with about Jackie? Well, Jackie, after we left, after I left the convent, they closed that convent when I left. I mean, that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jackie, she had it bad. But after that, we lost track of each other. And at one time, we did visit her in Boston. She was going to college then, and she had a little apartment somewhere I think it was by the fifth floor up or something uh, we didn't see much of her uh, we haven't really kept that much in touch of each other except um, a couple of times we stopped there we visited with them after she you know had her family in Washington one time we spent New Year's Eve with them which was very nice we had a great time in there um, and then I I really didn't keep uh, Leopold I did because he was priest in Caribou, so we kept in touch with him more. It was closer. And then we had Harold that landed in Limestone. Of course, he was almost like an orphan there, poor thing. And uh, we got close to Harold from Limestone and have stayed friends. Of course, we're friends with everybody. But Do you remember any of your early childhood experiences with Jackie? Well, that's when I got to know her. As kids, we would go there and we play with everybody. I mean, everybody was, it wasn't just one particular person. But I remember Jackie used to come home too, like Mary Paul did, you know, on the train. We'd 
travel back and forth on the train and visit each other. I, I know Jackie did too, but what we did, I mean, we probably just play dolls or whatever it was we were doing. What were the high school dances like out here? High school dances? Yeah. Where? Out here. When you guys, did, you, um, did you guys all go together out here? Or were you guys separated? Oh, we never had high school dances. Oh, really? No. No? I mean, no. The, there was no school, there were no dances at the convent? You yeah. mean it's the baddest? Yeah, no, uh, when you came back out here. Oh, when I came back here? Yeah. Oh, when I came back, like to Soldier Pond? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, there were dances. Well, we used to go, we used to go to Eagle Lake. There were some places at Eagle Lake, oh God, heavens forbid. Wait, let me, for, para, para. Yeah, you, you're right, we, we used to go there. And there was one in place at Marnie's in place did. that's where I didn't meet him there. Um, and then we, I met Robert at a barn dance in Fort Kent. And what was that like? How did you meet him at the barn dance? Oh, just dance. Oh, we, met Fort. oh, we were, we, that was in the summer. I graduated in 47, by the way, high school. And that summer, I wanted to stay in Lewiston to go to work and to go to, co there's, there was a junior college in, in Auburn and I wanted to go there. But I'd been away all these years. No, you're going to stay here. Well, Soldier Pond, what do you stay there for, right? So anyway, <laughs> uh, in the summer, I, I don't know that I worked that summer. I mean, maybe if I did. Uh, and then we that fall, I had gone to a barn dance with friends of ours from Soldier Pond. And Robert was there, and he was a good dancer, and we danced. And that was... He wanted to take me home. No, that I think that time I was with my brother. Silver Dollar. Oh, Silver Dollar. It was at the Silver Dollar. <laughs> he wanted to take me home. Well, heaven forbid. Just come out of the convent. Nobody takes, no boy takes you home. So I was there with my brother. And my brother took me home, which was fine. I didn't mind that. As long as we went to dances. I used to love to go dancing. But we never had, I remember the first date my mother arranged for me. It was with Willis Stoddy. Oh my God, heaven forbid. Now this date was arranged. My mother, oh yes, my mother. <laughs> well, this Willis was my age and they lived, when we lived across the bridge, he used to live across the road from us. And um, all of a sudden she says, Willis is gonna take you to a dance. Well, I didn't have to go with my brother, but he was one of those pumpers. You know, he pump, you know, your hand pumps up and down, up and down, up and down. Or well, while you're dancing. Oh, okay. Well, it wasn't it, you know, my first date, my last one with him. <laughs> Too much pumping, huh? Oh, my God. No, there was, it was I my mother's choice. I never heard that term before. Uh, well, he it goes like, the, yeah. you know, oh, oh, my God. Uh, show me that again. <laughs> Can I <see> a pumper? <laughs> Oh, and, and so swing dancing was a scene then, right? Oh yes. Now my brother played the piano. Well, he played the piano like nobody's business. I mean, he was he was a natural. And as sometimes on Sundays when my parents were gone, we'd round up some girls. Never boys. Boys never danced then. And we'd jitterbug on the living room floor on you know linoleum. We would jitterbug, but I'd never with boys because there's no boys in Soldier Pond that dance except for the pumper. We, we never invited him. <laughs> no. Over the years, especially in later years, we, our family feels that you're really part of our family. Oh, I know. It. It's nice. And we'd want to like to hear your side of that. Well, I feel, I feel grateful that you do, really. Because um, I have no family. <laughs> which is good well I shouldn't say I have no family I have a husband and three children and grandkids but uh, no siblings um, I'm gonna stop the for a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah but this is a nickname thing right? it doesn't matter it's okay right, tell us the story uh, okay well we 
Anyway, in the summer we used to go to we used to go to dances, and, th and this time we had gone. This is the time I, I went to the barn dance. Okay, the second time I met Robert at the barn dance. So this time, well, the second time I meet him, maybe it was a year later, <clears throat> and there were three of us girls from Soldier Pond. I had I always had my father's car, and after the dance, Robert said, "Why don't you come out to eat with us?" And Claire, well, he said, "I can't do that." Because one of the girlfriends we I had with me. We had dropped at the corner of Route 11 because her boyfriend, who the mother detested, was picking her up there. And he was going to bring her back there at a certain time. Uh, he was going to bring her back in Fort Cantano, in front of the bowling alley, after a certain time to meet us. Okay. Well, anyway, when Robert asked that, and then they wanted to take our, my other friend, Dora Jean. I couldn't name them, Dora Jean. So Georgine and I decided, okay, we're going to Claire with these two guys. They were going to buy us lunch. What the heck? So we went. But then when we come back, of course, you're young and you're crazy, and come back to the car, my, the car was parked in front of the bowling alley where this other Georgine's sister was supposed to meet us after the dance. And it was, I, I think, a couple hours later, then we were supposed to be there, and she was panicking in the back seat of that car. She was scared right to death that we wouldn't be coming back to the car. She was afraid her mother would find out where she had been, but she didn't. We took her home. We used to do that all the time with those two, because the mother did not like her boyfriend, and we'd take her to the, to the road, to the end of the road. That was nice. She never married him, by the way. Married another guy. <laughs> oh, bad things we did. All, all bad things? Like what bad things? No, we didn't do bad things. <laughs> no, we really didn't. We didn't know what bad was. Well, what did you think was the baddest thing you ever did? Oh, racing down, um, racing uh, on the road to, what road is that? Going from the, the sporting club to Frenchville, between Fording, sporting club and Frenchville. We had been to a dance at Sporting Club, and there was this girlfriend of mine, Pelletier. They had a big farmhouse up there, and we'd always gather there because they had a big piano, and we'd dance and sing and never drank. Nobody ever drank any. Nobody ever smoked. But we would just go there. And that night, there was some boys coming, following us, and they wanted to pass. And they didn't pass. I stayed ahead of them. That was scary. I think of that today. My kids did that. I don't know what I do to them. You know, little things like this. What else did we do that were wrong? I mean, of course, the nuns sent us, sent us to confession every Saturday. Oh, that was, that was, I mean, talk about being depressed or whatever. <laughs> You'd have to go tell your sins, okay? You have to remember how many times. And if you forgot one, that was a sin if you forgot one. And then you w <laughs> you go into that confessional and that priest would reek of smoke, you know, like cigar smoke. And, and there you are. You've got your five fingers and you're holding one and you're so nervous about telling this. And then you're thinking, oh, my God, five times. Maybe I did it six times. I'm not sure. Well, I'm going to say five. And you go right down the line and there you go. And the priest... And then you come out of there and you think, oh, my God, and I, did, I said only five, and I could, it could have been seven. So there I am, a bigger sin on top of what I left there. What was the biggest sin that you ever had to confess? Oh, 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 oh. talking back to the nuns. Then, you know, like, not talking, no, bad thoughts. My bad thoughts were I didn't like them. Also, really? It's not that I didn't like them. I, I think I was scared of them. I didn't understand them. You know, when you're younger... You don't understand what they want from you. As you get older, you understand more. But when you don't understand what, what it is they want, you just don't like that, that situation. And most of my things were bad thoughts of, of that. Or talking, now talking out of, out of line. When you're going in from one room to the other, you're not supposed to talk. You're not supposed to smile or... This is the school that you're at. Yes. It was that rigid at school. Oh. It was so rigid. <laughs> it was very, very. Now, the first year I was there, I don't know if I told, I think I said, told that to somebody the other day. The first year 
I was there the first winter. I had the long johns. Remember I said we wear long johns? <laughs> well, anyway, that was my first experience. Well, I had to go to the bathroom. No, nope, you can't go because it's past time and it's not time to go. You know, you'll have to wait until, well, somehow or other, I messed my pants. And I tell you, I didn't pee my pants. I messed my pants. And I had, I remember having a, like a galvanized tank a can or something in front of me and having to scrub those those pants. I remember that. That's one of the things I remember that. But hey, I was how old was I? Maybe seven, six or seven? Nobody told me that I had to go to the bathroom at certain times, but now I do. Now I just I'm controlled. Complete. If they didn't control anything else, they did. <laughs> My bladder controlled. Oh, there's so many things. Oh, yes, you didn't know. At Santa Gat, back to Santa Gat. You know what they did with the young kids that would wet the bed? When I got older, like I was 7th and 8th grade, after Mass, we could come out and go up and help the little kids make their beds and get dressed and sh wash up and whatever. And the little kids that had wet the bed, they were taken into a shower. Now, the nuns did that. They'd take them into the shower and I think it was cold shower, we were told. The kids would be screeching in there. I mean, it was horrible. And sometimes when I had one that had wet the bed, I'd make the bed poof right over that. I'd never even, and the nun would come and she'd say, uh, you know, in French, real nice French, did she wet the bed? No. That was another lie I said. And I didn't tell that in confession either. I mean, poor kids. You know, that was horrible. Another thing they did to us, at Con it's all coming back, see, the mind, uh, lice. Oh, I had lice until I was a freshman. Every year, I, every time I come home on a, on a holiday, my mother had to use, they used to call it larkspur to, to wash your hair and to get the, the lice out of there. But the nuns, they were so nice to you, they really liked you. They were... This is why I never liked them. They would be combing your hair in front. There's a big, big dormitory. You know, there's there's more than three girls there. There's umpteen of them. And you're standing up front there, and she's taking your little comb, your little comb. She's going down there and going, I mean, oh. And I had, I don't know where. They just loved me. I had good, I think I had good grounds in there. It's probably where half my brain went to. But I, that was the most humiliating thing that they ever could do to you, to anybody. And they did it, and I don't think it bothered them. One, I think they liked the idea that there you were, you know, with lice in your hair. But the last time I had lice was that summer I came home. My mother was sick. She was in the hospital. But when I went to Amelda's, I remember that. I still had them. Well, she took care of that had my hair cut short. I haven't seen one since. But that was one thing that, that was because I don't think they kept us clean enough. Really. That was, that was a bad thing there. So, now you know where my brain is. A lice ate it up. <laughs> so. Great. Well, I think we got it all. You got enough? Yeah. So. Yeah, and I appreciate you doing this, really. Uh, yeah, I and it's, it. yeah, and you know the the uh, the summer when you gather in the summer at the cottage, I always appreciate you calling and asking us to go there, and always have enjoyed that. And I especially used to enjoy uh, Viol Violet, you know, Bernard's housekeeper. She would call here and make sure she'd say, "Make sure you come over now." Uh, you know, and everybody, Leopold, everybody call, would call and make sure we, and we've always enjoyed the families. And I was nice to see that the young children, the grandkids and the great grandkids are enjoying it as well. It shows by that video you, you gave us. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Camera's rolling. Okay. Now, I also remember about Santa Gat that you had to take your bath, and I don't think we took a bath every week. One week you took a bath, and the next week you took a foot bath. Because I remember they had foot pans to, for your feet. So this I don't know what... A, this was once a week. Once a week is a foot bath, 
the other week, not, not, a, a shower, not a bath every week now. Every other week. Hello, yes. <laughs> Remember the lice that were living in my head? <laughs> but we had to take a bath with our nightgown on. And I don't know how much water we had in there, but I'm sure, and the nightgowns were in the winter, well, it was winter, and it was heavy flannel. And I don't know <laughs> who dried. Now, you said you did the same when you went there. Well, I went there a few years after. Well, no, I'm not going to hear you say that. Go ahead, go one minute, Tim. Go ahead. I ended up at Santa Gat a number of years after I didn't did, because I'm 66, and you're, do you mind telling us? I'm 84. Huh? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and? <laughs> and they, I was in the dormitory. There must have been 20, 30 boys, I guess. Nuns had their little room curtained in. But we, we were allowed to take baths every week. It was in a tub. And they would give us what you would call a dish towel to wipe, the fine cotton, and with a big safety pin. And we were to wrap ourselves up. We were not to look at ourselves. I, I don't know how you wash yourself without touching yourself. But <laughs> you, you had to wear that to take a bath. Well, Pat Martin, a friend of mine, myself, and a number of boys, we never did wear it. We would take our bath, wash ourselves the same way we did at home, then take the cloth and, and soak it and wring it and then take it back. You had to, they gave you one when you walked into the tub and they, they picked it up when you went out and some boys got caught by turning in a dry one. I don't know what they did to them. But you so you had to cover yourself while you were ta to take your bath? That is correct. You didn't wear your nightgown? Now we had no, to wear we a nightgown. Night we had to wear a nightgown, and you take your sleeve, your sleeve out, put your arm.